Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So before making anything, before saying anything, I would like to make an announcement that at 10 a.m. today only, I'm going to take a session on Spotlight of May 2021 for NABAD examination. So if you want to revise this Spotlight magazine with me, so come at 10 a.m. on our channel. Okay, so let's begin this video for today in which we are going to discuss a lot of interesting questions and you must have read it on the thumbnail as well that we are going to discuss about the world's first space rice. So this, what is the space rice? This is a new kind of agricultural seed or is it something new in the field of agriculture itself? That is something that we are going to discover and believe me, you will all enjoy what this space rice seed, seed is. So on that note, let's begin today's session. But before that, subscribe and hit the bell notification, guys, because I constantly say this thing. This is going to help you in staying connected with our channel and you will get the latest updates by, uh, hit, uh, by hitting the notification bell. This is the Telegram group. If you have queries, if you want to enjoy the quizzes or if you want to get the latest updates, so you can join this telegram group and the link of this group is in description below. So that was the introduction. Now let's discuss the first question about the space rise. Which country has harvested world's first batch of space rice, which is also known as rice from the heaven in the country? Mongolia, China, UAE, Japan and Canada. Which, which one is the right answer? It is the amazing China. So space rice, what is this space rice? Space rice is basically when they launched their change pipe mission into space. So this mission was for moon exploration, lunar exploration mission was this change pipe mission. So when they launched this mission, they put a, a bag of the rice seeds inside that spacecraft and that bag, that those seeds have roamed around the moon. They have uh, traveled around the moon and thus they returned to the earth and they become the space rice. So that is the mystery behind the space rice. They are nothing, uh, this is nothing a new kind of uh, new kind of uh, I would say seed in the agriculture sector it is just the seed that is grown on the earth they took that uh, seed into a bag to the lunar surface then they traveled that rice and came back with the seeds and termed it as the space rice so tomorrow on the Gaganyan mission I am going to send my specs and then I'm claim I will be claiming that these are the world's first spectacles that have traveled around the moon so that is something that I'm planning to do now, uh, taking the inspiration from China. <laughs> but that was, that was a joke. So jokes apart. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't control my laughter at this. Okay, so jokes apart. Basically, what is the idea of having such, of doing such a thing? Basically, they explored the, they exposed the rice seeds to the space atmosphere, to the cosmic rays and the atmosphere that we have in the space. And now they are uh, going to sow it into their laboratories, bread, uh, breed this, these seeds into the laboratories and see if there is any kind of mutation happening to the seeds or not. So that is why they are doing this. And this is not the first time they have sent such kind of a seed to the space. They have been sending seeds since 2018 but this is the first time that they are cultivating the seeds therefore it became the world's first batch of space rice now let's discuss something about the change 5 mission as well because this was one of the most important missions of china again i just can't wrap around wrap my head around this concept of space rice look this is really funny okay now jokes apart, this change five mission, basically it planted the flag of China on lunar surface. And because of that, China became the second country after US to uh, plant its flag on the lunar surface, okay? Second fiat that this mission achieved is that it brought back the samples from moon for res uh, research and exploration 
and thus china became the third country in the world to bring samples from moon for research exploration and uh, the first two countries are us and russia so that is the uh, that is the achievement of this mission and it has safely returned to the earth as well so that was all about this new space rise now agriculture students you should keep this space rise in your mind okay next question is hey, just give me a second next question is which country has launched world's largest carbon emission trading platform us india peru china brazil so it is the world's largest carbon emitter that has launched this carbon emission platform it is again china the largest carbon emitter in the world is at present uh, is china at present followed by the us then we have india so india is also the uh, world, is one among the world's largest carbon emitters now first of all you need to understand this thing that through this world's largest carbon emission trading program they are going to create a market wherein carbon credits can be traded among the companies okay so first i'm going to tell you all the facts related to this news and then i will teach you what this carbon credit is what the carbon emission trading means because carbon emission trading is not at all a new concept you must have heard about it but those who are attending this class for the first time or th those who don't know even about the carbon tra uh, trading they have a right to know okay and that is precisely for i am here okay so let's first discuss the facts about the uh, world's largest trading platform a uh, trading program okay so it is going to create the world's largest market for carbon trading i don't think that there is anything to be explained that needs explanation there is nothing the next point here is that at present this program is for power generation companies in china so rem remember this thing that this program is the national program of china so only chinese companies are allowed to participate in the trading and it is only for the chinese companies at present so it is for the power generation companies a total of 2225 power generation companies will be participating in this program and you would uh, you would be amazed to know this thing that these many companies are responsible for the 1/7 of total global carbon emission that is released from the fossil fuel combustion because they create energy they create electricity by combusting the fossil fuels and thus they account for 1/7 of the total carbon emission in the world in terms of fossil fuel combustion okay so that is the second fact here the third fact here is which is a very very important fact here that is that china aims to become become a carbon neutral country by 2060 carbon neutral by 2060 and that is why this program has been launched by china now the next point here is that over the 5 to 7 years china aims to include other sectors in this program as well other sectors like petrochemical steel aluminum all the high carbon emitting sectors will be included under this program that is the plan of china right okay so these were the facts related to this news now let us understand what carbon trading is very easy it is a very easy concept carbon trading is basically for example if i am a manufacturer theek okay? hai in india i am a steel manufacturer and this is me neha and here we have nishita I am a steel manufacturer, and Nishita is a cotton manufacturer. Let's see. 
ठीक है प्रोसेसर बेसिकली हर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट प्रोसेसेस दी कॉटन सो द कार्बन फुटप्रिंट हु विल हैव अ लार्जर कार्बन फुटप्रिंट ऑब्वियसली द वन व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टील सो द कंपनी व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टील वुड हैव अ लार्जर कार्बन एमिशन सो हियर बेसिकली अंडर द कार्बन एमिशन ट्रेडिंग प्रोग्राम्स और प्लेटफॉर्म्स और मार्केट प्लेस द गवर्नमेंट और द पॉलिसी मेकर सो हियर let's take the example of indian government so i wrote goi that means government of india so let's take the example of the government of india so government of india has put the limits have has provided the caps on carbon emission that means it has provided a certain limit that this much carbon emission can be done by a manufacturing company in the steel sector okay for example it is 1 lakh metric ton so this much is the limit for a manufacturer in the steel sector and suppose i uh, did the carbon emission of 2 lakh metric tons so here I have exceeded this limit तो अब क्या करूँ business बन करके घर चली जाऊँ नहीं तो penalty भरूँ government को नहीं वो भी मुझे नहीं करना I won't be paying the penalty to the government so jail नहीं वो भी नहीं so what I will do I will purchase the carbon allowance or the carbon credit that Nishita will have now suppose a unit in the cotton manufacturing or cotton processing uh, processing sector has been allowed 1 lakh metric ton of carbon emission but still she is in the cotton processing sector therefore her carbon footprint is low carbon emission is lower and she did 50000 metric tons of emission okay so what i will do i will purchase the remaining 50000 carbon credits from nishita carbon credit is basically the limit the total limit that has been set aside by the government so that each and every company in each and every sector can have a cap on carbon emission so that is basically the carbon credit that is the allowance if you won't uh, comply with that allowance either you will have to purchase the carbon credits from other another company in term in return of cash okay or you have to pay the penalty to the government so here i prefer to buy this much from nishita in return of cash okay so 50000 yahan se le liya 50000 i bought i bought from someone so this is how i fulfilled my uh, compliance because ultimately i had to pay i had to pay to nishita as well as someone else okay let's say the other person was minakshi from whom i bought the remaining 50000 metric tons okay so i had to bought uh, i had to buy the 50000 metric tons from nishita plus 50000 metric tons of carbon credits from minakshi ultimately i had to pay but what is the purpose then the purpose is that even if, if i have to pay this much amount i would uh, be cautious from the next time that i should limit my carbon emission so that i won't have to pay because ultimately this is also expensive i am going to pay extra for my carbon emissions whereas some decades back or some years back i had to pay nothing i was just free to produce as much steel as i could and earn the profit but now i have to pay so this is in a way discouraging the companies from emitting more carbon and thus they will uh, adopt the renewable energy sources or whatever energy or whatever Uh, material or equipments are there for them so that they can reduce their carbon emission so this is ultimately going to encourage the companies to reduce their carbon emission and obviously it is the companies that produces the carbon emissions that create the carbon emissions in the world so this is how carbon emission trading takes place between the companies takes place between the countries as well so us also does this carbon trading with the low emission countries for india also sells its carbon emission targets carbon credits to us because india is a low carbon emitting country in comparison to us but that was some time back but right now to india is also 
uh, becoming a larger uh, a large carbon emitter in the world so i hope that this is clear what carbon emission trading is to you so that was a very simple concept it's like the trading in the stock market where is world's first 3d printed steel pedestrian bridge located so you have the five options let me tell you it is in netherlands now which one is the right answer it is amsterdam because it's the amsterdam only which is located in netherlands it is the capital of netherlands okay so it has been developed by a company named mx 3d it's a dutch company okay and at the inauguration ceremony of this bridge the queen of netherlands was also present so what is the name of her of the queen of netherlands it is maxima it is important because she was present at the inauguration therefore her name was in the news therefore i have told you can you guys tell me who is the prime minister of netherlands in the comment section below do tell me okay so here finally we came across a question from our india madhya pradesh has launched unesco's historic urban landscape project to protect the heritage resources of its two cities name the cities khujrao mandu ujjain panchmari uh, gwalior orcha sanchi panna bhopal and indore so which one is the right combination the right combination is option c gwalior and orcha so if you are regularly following the current affairs you would know why these cities have been selected for this program because in 2020 in the later part of 2020 towards the end basically these two cities were selected into the unesco's uh, list of world heritage cities can you guys name another city from india which is a part of this world heritage cities a uh, list so this is your another task that you have to mention in the comment section below coming back to this question so what are they going to do under this program basically they are going to protect the heritage resources of these two cities because they are the world heritage cities now onwards and we all know that urban landscape is such that is rapidly changing and it is rapidly i would say deteriorating towards the natural as well as heritage resources therefore in order to protect the heritage resources of these two cities unesco the government of india as well as the madhya pradesh government will come together under this program and protect and protect and develop the infrastructure in such a way that the heritage resources of these two cities can be protected okay so that was all about this news but we need to know more about this unesco's uh, our historic urban landscape project so let's move on towards that the first fact here is so we have already discussed this because uh, that it was in december 22 that these two cities were added into the list unesco adopted this program in 2011 to maintain the heritage resources in a rapidly changing urban landscape so remember the year of uh, of the launch of this program now for orcha and gwalior you need to know certain facts about orcha and gwalior as well because they can be asked from you in your upcoming examination so orcha is popular for its temples and palaces so those who haven't been to orcha or gwalior would know from now onwards that why are these two cities famous like i have also uh, i have also never been to these two cities so i came to know through this news only i searched about orcha and gwalior and i found orcha to be a very pristine city okay so it is very famous for its temples and palaces and it was the capital of bundela kingdom such kind of question can be expected in your upsc examination but nowadays since rbi and abad sebi are also becoming unexpected so please re remember this as well that it was the capital of bundela kingdom in the 16th century raj mahal jahangir mahal ram raja mahal rai pravin mahal lakshmi narayan mandir are some of the famous spots of orcha gwalior was established in 19th century and it was ruled by the gurjar pratihar rajwansh tomar bhagel 
Kachwaho and Sindhya. So these are the uh, these are the families that have uh, ruled on Gwalior. So Sindhya's would remind you of Jyotiraditya Sindhya. Tell me the ministry that he has been given. Uh, so this is the last question for today. World University Summit. So which university organized this World University Summit 2021? Massachusetts Institute of Technology, O.P. Jindal University, Jawaharlal Nehru University, University of Delhi and HEC Paris. Out of these, O.P. Jindal University is the right answer. It is in India. So why is this summit important? Because it was inaugurated or I would say addressed by Vice President of India, M. Venkia Naidu. Therefore, it became important. So remember that this university uh, organized this World University Summit 2021 and here today's session ends. I hope that you have enjoyed the session. Do not forget to come at 10 a.m. for the May Spotlight revision. Thank you so much for watching the session.